Hello there, Aquarius. So let me just talk about this spread here. So we're going to start with the first house. And the first house deals with your identity. This is usually, you know, the, the rising sign, the face that you project into the world, okay? And the, the way you carry yourself, your personality and things like that. This is kind of like how other people see you. I feel that you are coming a little bit irritable, a little bit impatient, and a little bit kind of like... Um, ruminating and dwelling on the past you're looking at a past situation and i do feel a little bit of like um i almost want to say like resentment and i almost want to say like unfinished business um, being brought over and like the unfinished business is happening in your mind you're thinking about it and i feel like you might be obsessing over it but there isn't anything that you can do about it so it's very important for you to you know keep things into perspective uh, be a little bit more patient, be a little bit more concise and clear and directed with your communication. It's very, very important not to channel this energy because it usually indicates somebody who is, uh, who, you know, um, they don't communicate very well and they can also, um, uh, I, I guess like rile people up for the wrong reason. Okay. So this is like, you know, news that are, it's like somebody who might be misinformed and who might be spreading ideas and things that are not appropriate. So just be very, very careful with the way that you are projecting. Be patient when dealing with others. Watch the tone that you are interacting with, with other people, as well as, um, you know, cultivate that sense of, um, I guess like learning to sit still, learning to wait for things to come to you rather than charging ahead to, um, you know, for rather than being too aggressive when charging forward and charging ahead. Um, on the other end, side of the coin, the page of wands is somebody with a lot of, a lot of ideas. And I feel like this is a very inventive, creative, impatient, but also very creative, very inventive, very intelligent uh, energy. I feel that a lot of you are sitting on a lot of good ideas and I feel that, you know, you want to move ahead, you want to charge ahead to make money from these ideas and to bring them into the world. But for whatever reason, um, the environment that you're dealing with, it might not be the right time or the people that you're, w w that you're uh, dealing with, the people around you, they might not be on board because they think it is too risky. So just be careful and, you know, we're still dealing with the tail end of that Mercury in retrograde as well as the shadow period. So don't make any moves until the end of the month. And I feel that it's going to pan out well for you, okay? These ideas are great, but the timing is not just yet. So don't push ahead for them, okay? And I feel like other people are telling you this as well. They're telling you to wait, wait, and wait. And you feel like, no, I need to act now. So it's really important for you not to uh, jump the gun and to really sit down and reassess, okay? I do feel some of you are carrying some type of, um, you're, you're looking back at the past, right? And I feel like there is a little bit of like resentment. There's a little bit of like, um, dwelling on the past, but you're not doing anything about it because it's in the past. It's out of your life. It's out of your control. And I feel that a lot of you are still trying to figure out something from your past. You're either looking into it. You're either like instigating it or something. So just be careful of that energy. Okay. Let the past go. We are moving into the new year. So charge forward ahead in this direction. All right. What's coming through in your second house here is the eight of wands. And the second house rules money and your values. So let's talk about money first. Um, I feel like money is going to be just a little bit slow this month. I feel that you have enough abundance. Like there is financial, you know, there's financial abundance in your environment. However, if you are working on a client basis, for example, if you're, uh, you work off sales or commission, there might be a little bit of a slowdown. So I feel that there is kind of like um, financial uncertainty. That's why there is a little bit of a slowdown. So I feel that it's not, um, don't get worried about this because I feel that it's just the normal business cycle. So just be patient as well. Okay. The eight of wands indicates a lot of communications, a lot of opportunities coming through either through email, some type of virtual communication coming in for you for, uh, for a lot of, um, like, you know, for, as to how you can make money 
I feel like a lot of communications coming in from people where they're asking about things, but they might not follow through when it comes to the actual transaction. So there's kind of like, um, you know, like dead ends, leads going nowhere and like expending a lot of time on a specific situation just to pan out, just to know that the other people are going to pan out. So I f uh, aren't going to pan out. So I feel like there might be, you know, you, you might be thrown like dead leads. Okay. Just be careful about that and be very, very patient. Don't get frustrated. What I also feel with the uh, Eight of Wands when it comes to your value system here is um, be careful about who you are sharing, you know, like um, secrets with. Be careful about where you are getting the sources of information, your sources of information. I do feel there is heavy, heavy philosophical debates and I feel that it's really important for you to curb your tongue and, you know, communicate in a way where it doesn't like tear the other person down. So, you know, as adults, we can all have discussions, even though we don't agree on a specific thing. Don't make it an emotional discussion about, you know, some philosophical topic. So, for example, if you don't agree with somebody uh, the way they the things that they believe in, whatever it is, political, religious, whatever it is, um, argue more from you know a rational standpoint rather than getting on a horror moral like high ground and preaching so i feel that it's really important to be careful when it comes to communication for this month i feel that you might not have you know adequate information and you might you might have read something without knowing it in depth and then you might you know try to pass it off as if it's the truth and i do feel that um it's going to rub people the wrong way and there might be you know if you're talking in a big group for example there may be experts on that field in that group and i feel that you might get called out so just be very careful aquarius you are a very intelligent sign and i feel like you can um, absorb and you know for a lot of information just by gleaning something so you i feel that you you tend to jump to uh, conclusions and a lot of the times your intuition and your intellect, you know, guides you to the right conclusion. But I feel that for this month, especially with this heavy Mercury retrograde and cycle shadow period, it's really important for us to know our facts and where we're getting our information so that we are not, um, so that we can like back up our claims. Okay, be careful about that. So money is a little bit slow. Um, especially for the first half of the the year, but I do feel that it's going to pick up for you, okay? So we do have the third house, which deals once again with um, siblings and communication. We have the star in the reverse position, and the star in the reverse position here, it's, um, I don't want to say it's a bad card, but I do want to say that, you know, um, communication can go awry where it can actually hurt people. I feel like big egos, I feel, you know, uh, pride, like somebody's pride being pricked. So that's the message that I'm hearing. So just make sure you communicate in a way where it is meaningful, where it's a little bit calmer, where you don't agitate other people. And likewise, if somebody is trying to re uh, to engage you in a verbal debate and you don't really care for that topic, just, you know, shake them off. Okay. Don't let things escalate. Try to uh, aim for de-escalation. Don't um, get yourself embroiled in a conflict with somebody that you know is like ref who refuses to see the truth so it's really important to just curb our tongue to be patient with other people and to watch our communication as it pertains to uh siblings especially um and you know you you could be a, a, if you're like the only child i don't feel this is going to apply to you but it does deal with communication so maybe that message is the takeaway message for you if you have siblings, step siblings, whatever the situation might be, um, when it comes to your siblings, we have the star in the reverse position. And the star in the reverse position, this is a card about, you know, getting a, a sense of direction when it comes to our aspirations, our dreams, our, um, our spiritual journey. When it shows up in the reverse position, I feel like there's a little bit of like a sibling rivalry comparison, comparing yourself to other uh you know your sibling or there's a sense of like your sibling comparing themselves to you there might be some some jealousy there might be some like i feel like a little bit of 
envy, a little bit of resentment as it pertains to siblings and responsibilities and when it comes to household obligations. Even the environment that you, you grew up in as well, you know, the family unit that you grew up in as it pertains to siblings. I feel like there might have been some type of imbalances, like unfairness. Somebody feels like they were left out. Somebody felt as if, you know, one parent favored the other child more. There, there's some type of um, envy going on in the um, sibling department. If the communication is starting out in that manner, just be patient with one another, okay? Because I feel like there is immense healing that needs to happen when it comes to healing, not family issues, but like, you know, um, either whatever problems, whatever estrangement that has happened between siblings, it's really important to just, you know, air out your dirty laundry and see where it goes. And I feel that for whatever reason, there is a, a little bit of a chip on somebody's shoulder, having like dealing with some type of resentment, having to take care of something, like feeling as if one sibling is very irresponsible and then somebody has to step in and play the role of like the fixer upper or have to do some damage control as it pertains to sibling relationships. I do feel that this is an area that is a, of, um, of a major concern for you guys coming into the month, uh, I'm sorry, the year of 2017. This sibling issue needs to be resolved and the sooner that you do it, the easier 2017 is going to be for you. If this sounds familiar, have a, you know, if you're estranged from your siblings for whatever reason, if you feel like, if you feel like there might have been some unfairness or some resentment, whatever the issue might be, and you know, um, it, we grow up with one another as siblings and we know everything about the other person. So it's really important to like really try to see them as, um, the person they could be rather than the, the person that they are right now and work from that angle okay i do feel a lot of healing needs to happen as it pertains to like family relationships especially siblings all right um the fourth house deals with family and the mother and uh, both of these cards are linked up so strongly with this heavy heavy water energy um, it just feels like a lot of it is drama created within the family unit growing up. And um, let me just talk about this. The Page of Cups. Let me talk about the mother. Um, this is somebody that is a little bit of a, a you know, who, who's like attention seeking, for example. Okay. And um, I feel that they're going to be, they're, they're, they're going to be in a position where they're not able to help themselves. And uh, when you look at this card, usually it indicates like a child, somebody who is a child or who is behaving like a child. And when a child, this is shown up in the reverse position, it basically means that their emotional needs are not met. They don't feel nurtured and loved and cared for. And when they don't feel loved and nurtured and cared for, they're going to lash out. And they're, they're going to lash out in a way where it seems a little bit childish, kind of like throwing tantrums, saying hurtful things that they don't mean, and then pretending like they didn't say it. So I feel like, you know, um, when it comes to like a mother relationship, you're going to be called upon to um, deal with this person. And you're going to have to basically teach them to communicate in a meaningful way that expresses their actual needs that is meaningful for other people as well. So rather than throwing tantrums and becoming and having that communication breakdown, it is really important to teach them, you know, how to communicate effectively so that they can get what they want or they can get their point across in order for you to help them get what they want. Um, this is also as it pertains to your family environment. This is a child. This can be your child that you're living with or taking care of. This is somebody who is quite manipulative. So be careful about deception. Be careful about exaggeration um, or like misrepresenting the truth. Okay. So I feel like you're dealing with somebody who is a little bit sneaky and I do feel that they're warning you to be uh, on guard. I feel like this child is doing a lot of attention seeking, but they're very, it's a, um, a water suit. It's not exactly a water sign, but it's a water, a suit of water. So it's somebody who's very like, um, covert. The things that they do is a little bit like under the radar. It's very subtle. It's hard to catch them in the act. 
but you know there's something distrustful about them, okay? So it's a month for you to be extra vigilant, I feel. And I feel like this child feels very, very emotionally neglected. I feel this child feels almost like um, neglected, unloved, and, you know, like almost as if almost as if they're doing it out of a sense of resentment or frustration or, you know, just uh, screaming out for attention, but not wanting to draw the attention to themselves. So there is a little bit of a covert, sneaky behavior. Uh, specifically, if it's a child of yours, I do feel a child with heavy water energy. So Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, or Rising, I do feel somebody, you know, under the age of 20, okay? Uh, if you're dealing with a mother figure, this is a Sun, Moon, rising water sign pisces cancer scorpio somebody that might be um they're, they're not able like i feel like they're dealing with a lot of frustration they're also feeling unloved unappreciated so there's a lot of healing that needs to happen in your family unit and if you can do it for january i feel that it's going to be really good for you to go into the rest of 2017 and not having to deal with this later on okay so this is a sore spot i feel for many of you and it's important to straighten this area out and especially if you're you know if you're the only child i feel like there's some type of a chip on your shoulder here about feeling a little bit lonely feeling misunderstood and feeling as if you don't have a sibling to bounce ideas off of or you know, your mother might have like, for example, might have wanted a boy and then you were a girl or they might have wanted a girl and you were a boy. And so there is this um, overall sense of like feeling as if you couldn't live up to your mother's expectations. So that's coming through, especially for those who are, you know, only child or dealing with this. OK, so what's coming through in your fifth house in the fifth house deals with um, fun, recreation, creativity. We do have here the Page of Swords, and the Page of Swords basically indicates messages, news, communication that is coming through very, very swiftly. Things that you might not want to confront, but it's not necessarily bad or good. It's just, you know, very straightforward communication. So a lot of you in this sector, it deals with flirtation. It deals with people that you're hanging out with and having fun with. A lot of you might be dealing with a, an air sign. So this is a, another air sign, an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra, sun, moon, or rising. And this is somebody who behaves also with a very, very young energy. I feel like, you know, this is what I call like um, somebody with good intentions is showing up in the upright position. They have a good heart. They have good intentions. And I feel like they might have a penchant for mimicking other people in a way where it might be hurtful. They might behave in a childish manner where they uh, swing their sword about, you know, they, they might hurt people unintentionally with their words, with the thing they say, with mockery or with like mimicry or with like some type of um, communication that is not adult like. And I do sense this is um, coming through in the environment that you're dealing with as, you know, it pertains to like going out, having fun and being even like flirting with somebody like this. A lot of you might be dealing with someone like this um, in your romantic sector. OK, either you're dating them or you are um, seeing them like you just started dating them, talking to them, seeing them, whatever the situation might be. I feel like you're heavily dealing with a uh, an air sign and there might be. There might be a lot of similarities between you and them. So I do sense that thorough, honest, careful communication needs to be cultivated for this month, uh, who, no matter who you're dealing with. Um, I also feel this is somebody who's very, very honest, okay? And they, the, their, um, their honesty is almost brutal. It's almost like <clears throat> they're so honest that the things that they say might be a little bit embarrassing. And they're so honest that... Um, Whatever you ask them, they might tell you way more than you want to hear. So be careful about this. Um, I do see an overall uh, energy of um, just be careful. Do not get involved into gossip and things like that. Don't overanalyze situations as it pertains to like gossip floating around because I feel like it's coming back from bad people and it's coming from distruthful communications okay and, and communicators as well so keep your wits about you don't listen to you know riffraff and gossip as it pertains to your relationships and people that you're romantically linked up with okay so this is uh fifth house sixth house the sixth house is the chariot and this is a card that is really really positive so the sixth house deals with work 
health and your everyday routine. Uh, when it comes to work, this basically means, you know, uh, in the mundane sense, commuting to work. So you might have a far commute, you have might have like a short commute. Um, I feel like it's going to be a far commute. So this is like, you know, an hour, two hours away commuting for work. Um, what I'm also feeling with this card is you're going to feel like you're in the zone of things. Work is going to flow really smoothly. And I feel that, you know, you're going to catch your second win. It's almost like knowing how to do uh, things understanding how things work where you 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 do it like automatically you don't have to consult other people things are going really smooth and really well for you this is also indicative of like you know daily routine and things like that i feel a lot of you are making very good progress when it comes to getting into shape having a fixed schedule having meal plans having exercise routine and things like that which greatly simplifies your life and i feel that you know you're doing so uh in a very good manner like in a very productive manner uh overall it indicates high productivity it indicates like uh streamlined processes things are going according to plan and you're kind of like on you know automatic mode okay as it pertains to your health there's going to be a victory over health and this is a card about a victory overall. So if you have been getting some, you know, um, uh, beginning of the year health checkup or whatever it is, like, you know, going to the dentist, finding out you don't have cavities, going to the doctor, finding out your blood sugar is normal. So there's going to be some type of um, health, I guess, improvement or even like victory over health issues. OK, so if you have I, I almost feel like if you have some, you know, um, improper diagnoses in the past if you had like for some reason i feel stomach issues i feel like migraines i feel like overall whatever health issue has been plaguing you and you couldn't find like proper diagnoses i feel like some breakthrough when it comes to being able to find whatever it is that ails you so that's going to be coming through as well okay so i mentioned money is a little bit just a little bit slow but i do feel that you know the work is still going to be keeping you busy okay be careful about following following dead leads because I feel like you're you're very quick to bounce back. But I feel like, you know, there there might be a lot of people coming at you with a lot of questions and then they just peter out. They you know, you lose communication with them after, you know, three, four emails. So just be careful about that and just, you know, keep doing you because I feel like this is a very good card as well when it comes to your work situations. So seventh house relationships and work partnership. This is a very positive card. So needless to say, as it pertains to romantic relationships, big pregnancy card. So be careful if you are expecting, congrats. If you are not expecting, take care of yourself accordingly, okay? So this is a very, very big pregnancy card and it falls in your um, romantic sector. What I'm also feeling is um, whenever I see the Empress, it basically means, you know, somebody with a title. So a lot of you might be um, m might be like taking a relationship to the next level where you you or your significant other, you're calling each other either boyfriend, girlfriend or like fiance or like uh, husband, wife or something like that. It's like somebody giving you a title or you giving somebody a title. So either way, it indicates like a, an escalation, you know, moving things along for the better. And um, I want to say like giving somebody a title. OK. And um, overall, in your romance relationship sector with this card, it basically indicates very, very high power of attraction. I feel for a lot of you, um, you are coming off very sensual, very desirable, very sexual for this month. I feel like, you know, your power of attracting other people is very high. So it's a good month to really get out there and start dating, especially if you're single. I do sense a lot of relationships being official, being made official. I see a lot of people feeling very good about um, about their partner, feeling very appreciated, feeling like, you know, very stable. Uh, what I'm also feeling is, you know, makeovers, do-overs, like um, you might be getting into an exercise r routine. I feel like losing weight, gaining weight, but it's like doing so in a happy manner. Um, a lot of you might be doing a lot of makeovers as well, okay? And um, it, it's looking very positive. Just, you know, don't expend too much money in that manner. Um, let me see. The last message that I'm feeling here is um, 
I feel like for those of you who are expecting, you know, it's going to be very positive. Okay, this is a really good foundation here. When it comes to um, if you are in a business partnership with another person, for example, if you're in a business partnership, I do sense that things are really flourishing for you. Like there is an energy of expanding a business, getting a loan in order to buy higher value, you know, products. So high end products or if you know if you need equipment for whatever that business is, I do feel like money coming through where you can afford like, you know, top of the line products or even equipment for your joint business. So it's a really, really good merger business partnership merger between different companies or even between business partners. So it's a very, very positive card. Um, the next one house is the eighth house and the eighth eighth house and the twelfth house are a little bit complicated the eighth house for the sake of this reading i'm go just going to say joint finances okay and just to simplify mainly because it's a house of sex death regeneration but um just for simplicity we're not looking into the nato chart we're just looking into you know how astrologically things are going to pan out for you using the tarot as a method of like um t storytelling so for simplicity's sake, we're just going to say like joint finances, because that is more meaningful when we're looking at just one month. So with the justice card in the reverse position, um, the first thing that I'm feeling here is, first of all, if you are sharing joint finances with another person, so it's usually somebody who is linked up in your family uh, situation, right? There's going to be a sense of imbalance. So basically, somebody is kind of like mooching off another person. So I feel like somebody is putting in a lot of the work or the, a lot of the financial resources and the other person is resting on their laurels. So there's some type of imbalance here. It might not be, you know, like 90, 10, where somebody is putting in all the work and the other person is just sitting back and not doing very much. It could be like, you know, 60, 40, where it's a little bit uh, imbalance, but it's bearable. So this is um, one of the first things I want to warn you about. When these imbalances are basically unchecked, they can escalate to um, codependency. And it's really important to have a discussion as it pertains to your household, whoever you're living with, if you're sharing money with them, if you're sharing a space with them, if you're sharing responsibilities with them, and even, you know, child rearing with them. Uh, these little imbalances are going to escalate as we progress through 2017. Address them now. Wait until, you know, still be careful about your communication, but wait until the end of January in order to approach this with a fresh pair of eyes, I would say. So, you know, like whoever, you know, if like you have chores that are divided between two people, somebody might be very, very busy working the night shift and they don't have the time to take care of these chores, just make sure they do it, okay? If you do it, just make sure they reciprocate ne the week after to do their share of the work because I feel like things are not balanced out in your living environment. As it pertains to joint finances, this is money as well coming to you. We have the justice card in the reverse position. So I feel like there's going to be a little bit of a weight when it comes to dealing with other people's money. So if you and another person have applied for a loan, for example, there's going to be some type of legal paperwork. So maybe, you know, somebody might not have the proper credit scores. Somebody might be co-signing for somebody else. And then the other person might renege on their their payments, for example. So I feel like all of these things are going to be coming to light. It's not favorable with the legal card in joint finances. So it basically means usually people dividing assets between uh, each other. Um, usually it signals, you know, like um, divorce proceedings, and then you're you're not divorced yet. You're having a discussion about who who owns what and where the money is going so that you can split things along the the lines where it's fair but there's going to be heavy discussion because there are some innate imbalances between the relationship partners and it's not making things easy to divide up in a um, black and white manner um, what I'm also feeling as well is I feel like if you're in a relationship and, you know, there might be pregnancy, for example, there needs to be some type of discussion about who's doing what 
and who's taking care of certain responsibilities, okay? Do this now, otherwise these things are gonna come back up like in the later part of the year. And the main reason why I do this, this spread in this way is because there are things that we're not aware of. You know, we might have like your tunnel vision is right here. Like you're you're still thinking about some situation from the past. So you're not aware of these things. And it's really important for you to take a holistic focus into specific areas of your life so that these problems don't, you know, uh, gain traction, gain momentum throughout 2017. So deal with them early on. Deal with them now. OK, so there's something within your household that needs to be balanced out. And I feel like heavy sibling energy, heavy mother energy, as well as responsibilities within the household. Somebody's not doing their fair share. OK, um, so the next card here deals with the ninth house and the ninth house, the ninth house deals with higher education, travel, and it also deals with um, give me one second so t okay so higher education travel and um we have the ten of swords in the reverse position so this is like long we're talking long distance travel and we're also talking about you know religion as well and i guess like philosophical outlook and beliefs um i feel like a lot of you um there is a they're saying like a chip on your shoulder as it uh, pertains to educational attainment okay so let me just put it this way and it's going to go two ways um some of you might not have had the financial resources in your childhood environment for whatever reason to achieve you know higher education so that can be even finishing high school college grad school phd program whatever the situation is there's a little bit of a chip on your shoulder and i feel like a lot of you might feel as if oh i wasn't intelligent enough or, you know, I, I wasn't given, I wasn't blessed to have the opportunity to do that. If you are thinking that, I feel like with the Ten of Swords in the reverse, it's kind of like a do-over. It's like a second chance. So I feel like there's an opportunity for you to pursue something in the avenue of higher education, which can be returning back to school and finishing up that program that you've always wanted to, to finish. It could be, you know... Um, applying for grad school because the, uh, the, if the job market has been bad and you're thinking about upgrading your skills, returning back to school would be very fruitful for you. And then for others, I feel like you might have had a lot of education and you're not able to find work. So I feel that there's a little bit of a chip on your shoulder regarding, you know, your, your intelligence, like feeling almost like inadequate because you're not able to get the jobs that you want. So there's some, some, chip on your shoulder, some sore spot here when it comes to um, education as well. And I also feel this is also, you know, it rules long distance travel. And there's opportunities here to take a trip that can be very, very therapeutic. Take a, taking a trip with, you know, either siblings, family, or something like that, or even a romantic partner, going back to a place that might have had some sore spots for you returning to a place in order to allow healing to happen okay a lot of you might be dealing with somebody who has some health issues overseas that they're struggling with and you might you know be called upon to help them financially or e even um, physically and then others of you there might just be you know somebody is who might have some health issues is reaching out from overseas or somebody who might have health issues is traveling um, if you are yourself traveling be very, very careful. Be very, very careful about, you know, uh, falls and things like that. So just um, be cautious about where you're going. Wear proper shoes. Have proper equipment. Do not do any type of adrenaline rush type of activities in an environment that's not secure and it's not safe, okay? Be careful about that. So I feel like injuries and when it comes to, like, overseas travel and you know doing like reckless activities i feel like th these are like considered reckless activities um traveling is actually going to a place back to a place where you might not have had like a good experience i feel like that's going to be quite good for you and especially if there are family members and things like that there that might need your help okay so 10th house deals with career and it deals with the father figure we have here the four of wands and uh, let me talk about this in, in terms of career first because that's very important um, the four of wands this is a foundational card and foundational meaning that 
it's something on which you know other things can be built and um what I'm sensing here is the Four of Wands indicates a situation that is very, very stable. It's solid, it's stable, it has room for expansion, and it has room for growth. And I feel like for a lot of you, you are in a career track where you feel very good, you feel very stable, and you feel very, very happy. The negative side of this card here is that, you know, stability breeds complacency and it breeds uh, stagnation. This is a very good place that you're at, but they're urging you, you know, don't rest on your laurels. Don't kick up your feet and just uh, become complacent. Really think about expanding. Really think about, you know, things that you can do in order to make things better. And I do feel one of the major thing here with the Empress card in the business partnership is really think about ways in which you can expand the business, in which you can make something grow, in which you can nurture or foster something from the ground up so that it can add to this type of environment, so that it, it can create more dynamism, less boredom, and more excitement for you in a work environment. Um, as it pertains to the father figure, I feel like a lot of you, you might have a f type of father who is very, um, I almost want to say rigid, but it's not in a bad way. Somebody who has like a very, very fixed schedule. They eat a certain thing at a certain time every day. It's like somebody who might have quirks um, where they, you know, they're, they're very um, particular about certain, very strange quirks, and they're very particular about certain things. Um, I also feel that, you know, with the father figure, there's some very, very positive news coming through within the household so you know he might be purchasing a home he might be thinking about property he might be thinking about um, moving out of the home environment he be, might be moving into your home environment so i feel there's more contact with the father figure coming through for this month and i feel like you are living together under the same roof with a father figure so if you have been moved uh, if you have moved away in the past there is kind of like you know the that that energy of the father moving back into the picture you are either moving back into the household with your uh, your father um, or the father figure there there's some very very positive news transitions and things like that happening that is very good for him okay um, when it comes to you, going back to your career situation, I do feel that this is the month in which there's going to be very, very positive news, especially for those of you. Uh, if we are walking around like this, where, you know, we feel like, oh, we had, we had a lot of education, but we're underpaid and underemployed, I feel like there's going to be very positive news when it comes to your ability to get a really good job that is very stable, that will pay you adequately what you're worth, and that will also utilize your skills. And then for others of you, I feel like, especially if you're, you have been applying for work and there might not have been uh, much luck in the past, there's going to be like a sense of feeling almost as if you're going to have some breakthrough, okay? And for those of you who might have just been, you know, working, but you're not thinking about it as a career, you're just going to work doing the nine to five, aiming for something better, I do sense it is going to be made available to, for you for this month. I do feel like the 14th, and I, I believe I mentioned that um, with the uh, mid-month reading for December as well, January 14th being a very big uh, day for a lot of you. So this is something to keep in mind about, okay? So it looks very good. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So 11th house, friendships, group associations. Um, so obviously this is a card about reassessment this is a card about you know uh, waiting for that payout all the work that we put in we're hoping for some type of a payout uh, when it comes to your friendships I feel like a lot of you are gonna have to re-examine your friendships and I it's not always negative because you know Aquarius you have a wide circle wide network of friends you have friends from all over the world and I feel like some of your friends are going to fall upon hard times and they're coming to you for help. And I feel like what they're they're asking you for help with is going to seem like kind of a big deal. You know, it's it's going to seem like, whoa, well, that's a big favor that you're asking me. And I feel like you might not know them very well and they're asking for something big. And you're going to have to realistically assess like why of all people are they coming to you and whether or not it is practical or even financially feasible or even po humanly possible for you to be able to follow through with whatever it is that they're asking. 
uh, reassess your friendships because I feel like this is a, a little bit of a problematic card because it's a it's a number seven and number seven is you know it's a very very spiritual number and I usually think of this as kind of like um, when you're on when when you're like on top of the world when you're rolling in money you know do your friends like come to you and and then who come actually comes to you and then when you're down on your luck who's actually there so i feel like a lot of you need to reassess your friendships and you know you you might need to close some doors on some people and i feel that you you might have like a wide network of friends but when you're down on your luck i just feel that there are very few people that you can really rely on and you know you're, you're very self-reliant so i don't i feel like you don't go through life thinking that oh i'm gonna need help one day and who can i count on you're you're very self-reliant and you try to do things on your own and you're very stoic and you can take care of yourself but i just feel like your friendships um they might not be bad people but i feel like you're you're gonna need to narrow it down you're gonna need to like really think about what you value and can put up with in relate in in friendships and group associations okay so it's really important i feel starting this year because i feel like we're we're looking at uh some resentment some hostility here and i feel like this is a a good idea to do to really reassess if we're still compatible with someone if we have outgrown somebody and it doesn't mean you know just dumping your friends and and things like that it, it just basically means reassessing a situation to see if it's still serving your higher purpose okay so it doesn't automatically mean scrapping away all the friends that you have right now it's just reassessing it a little bit more being a little bit more skeptical um, being a little bit more realistic as well as to who your friends are and who your true friends are and who is actually there for you when you need them as well as you know who you should be there for when they need you um i do sense that you know they're they're saying like responsibilities obligations are coming through from friends and it's very une unexpected and it's like they're they're asking big favors of you and you're not in a position where you can help them okay so just something to think about 12th house so 12th house deals with institutions and secrets for the sake of this reading once again we're not doing that natal astrology chart we're just going to focus on you know things you're not aware of okay so this is a card about expansion this is a card about you know building something of value with another person so keep in mind this is something in your environment that you're not aware of we have the three of pentacles here so there is some shuffling as it uh, relates to your friendships as well as your work environment and the reason why I also included friendship is I feel like a lot of you are friends with your coworker, you're friends with your boss, you're you're like actually you consider them friends. And I feel like there is a sense of camaraderie, a sense of like um community when it comes to your work environment. And that can be a little bit problematic, so don't blur the lines between, you know, private life and work life, okay? Keep those things separate. It's good to, you know, really enjoy your coworkers, but if you're like um forging I guess forging like personal relationships on top of professional relationships is not a smart move. So just be careful, especially if you're working for somebody else. So just be careful. Um, so the three of pentacles, I, I think about this as alliances, okay? Alliances between being made between people. If you are in an environment where you're working for somebody, they're possibly expanding the business and they're expanding in a way where they might incorporate two other partners. So you might have, you know, one boss, and then there, you're later on, further down the line, you're going to have like three bosses, for example. And I feel like overall it's very positive, but this is being kept very hush-hush. And you're not going to hear about this possibly until the springtime. So I feel like things are in, um, in the works right now. What I'm also feeling is that they're saying like, I feel like there might be some slowdown when it comes to your money, which means that uh, the work environment, like for some reason, there's a little bit of a slowdown. So they might be hiring contractors, for example, and then that might have somehow affected the flow of things in the work environment. They might be doing some reconstruction, like, you know, uh, fixing up some part of the office, for example. And there's also money being diverted elsewhere. So I feel like rather than expanding the work environment, they're um, 
they're investing in a totally different venture altogether. This is something that's going to be made known to you. It's it's in the upright position. It's expansion, and it's very, very good, but for some reason, it's kind of like kept behind the scenes at this point. Some third party, um, you know, like hiring contractors, hiring people, and uh, even merging businesses together. So it can get a little bit complicated and they're keeping everything behind the scenes right now. I do wish you all the very best. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.